I'm Doug Caldwell, University of Florida, Collier County Extension. It's late October 2012 in Naples, Florida. I'm a landscape entomologist. An entomologist is somebody who has a passion for studying insects, learning their biology, and how to manage them, and sharing that information with other people. Some people call me Dr. Dougbug. I'm standing underneath the canopy of a beautiful banyan tree. Banyan trees is a common name for several ficus species. They usually have these intriguing aerial roots, which adds such character in the South Florida landscape. It can be used as a solitary tree, reaching heights of 50 feet or more and 50 feet wide. And believe it or not, it's also used as a common hedging material. The Cuban laurel ficus is in the Moraceae family. It's a home for the more popularly well-known mulberry fruit, as well as the edible fig, Ficus carica. The reason we're here today is the canopies are very thin, there's a lot of leaves missing, and as we look at the ground, there's a lot of premature leaf drop. If we look at these fallen leaves, you can see these little bumps. Here's an older leaf. These bumps are termed galls. Galls are distortions of the normal plant's growth. They can be caused by bacteria, fungus, insects, or mites. And as in this case, we're looking at a tiny wasp larva. The adult inserts eggs into the leaf. Somehow the growth of the leaf is reprogrammed by the presence of the egg and the chewing of the larva and you get these blister galls. This tiny wasp, termed Jose Fiela in these parts, showed up in 2007. I'm going to try and carefully cut the top off of these galls. And we can see there's many chambers or cells, not just one, where the larvae develop and feed. These galls cause the leaves to drop off the trees prematurely. Let's turn the leaf over and you can plainly see these little emergence holes where the Jose Fiela gall wasp emerged. With this severe gall infestation, we're seeing significant leaf drop, 50% in some cases. Less leaves, less photosynthesis. Less photosynthesis, less carbohydrates or energy for the plant to sustain itself. So we have a weaker plant. And if we have that much leaf loss, we're going to have twig dieback and subsequent branch dieback. So what are we going to do with this new insect? Usually gall insects are not that big a deal. They don't cause significant damage. It's mostly aesthetic. However, what I've been seeing over the last six years since this insect has been in town, we're looking at significant defoliation. So we need to look at possibly using a soil injection or a trunk injection of one of the systemic insecticides such as Merit or Safari. Right now, preliminary results from different companies indicate that the results are shorter term, maybe three months effectiveness, as opposed to nine to 12 months with the ficus whitefly using the same treatments. So this is a tougher one to control. The weeping ficus or ficus benjamina does not get the blister gall like the Cuban laurel ficus does. That's one way to tell them apart. The Cuban laurel is duller green and a blunt tipped leaf. Benjamina, ficus benjamina, has a shinier, glossier leaf, a little bit darker green, and it's distinct point at the tip of the leaf. This is Doug Caldwell, Dr. Doug Bug, helping you to beautify your landscape and protect the environment. P.S. I took a cutting of a nearby Cuban laurel because I noticed there was a lot of sooty mold. It was also very thin. Upon closer inspection, we see there's three different insect pests here. We have the blister gall we were talking about earlier, as well as ficus white fly. You can tell by the little shed cast skins, the white cast skins, which show up against the sooty mold. And what's causing the sooty mold is the low bait lack scale. You find that on the twigs. So you have to look close. You may not have just one insect pest. In this case, we have three insect pests. Oops. 
Here's a fourth pest, another white fly that showed up in January 2012. It's called Bonder's nesting white fly. It attacks ficus benjamina and some other fruit crops as well. You can see why they call it nesting because the white fly sort of circles around and deposits its eggs and white waxy material in a circular fashion like a, a bird's nest. We now have four instead of three pests and this is what's happening in South Florida. What was once a pest free plant is now a high maintenance plant due to these new pests coming into our area. 